Hey, I'm Chris F from Make Everything. Welcome back. Hey, I'm Chris F from Make Everything, and today we are gonna try and turn this bar of titanium into a little scalpel using the forge. I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's get started. Using these little vice grips that I modified really made a big difference in terms of how much I was able to control the material while I hit it. What I found was that the titanium was getting really hot very quickly, but cooling down almost as quickly. It really was absorbing the heat, but then also losing it, shedding it. Pretty easy to work though. Wasn't totally difficult. It definitely was a little different than the little bit of experience I have hammering steel, just in terms of its heat retention and the way that the hammer bounced back off of it. Titanium has really good spring properties, but I'm basically just trying to draw out that bar, make it flat, and then curl over the end and kind of isolate the blade area to get the base shape of it down before I head over to the grinder. Now I grabbed this punch that I normally use to uh, punch and drift little holes in steel and thought it would be a nice idea to punch and drift a little hole on the back side of this thing, kind of like for a lanyard or to hang it on a hook. And uh, well, you'll see, didn't really turn out so great. That's not gonna work. Oh well, I'll have to drill a hole in it. So it turned out that as I drifted that hole, I was able to you know, get a hole in the material, but from trying to stretch it out, maybe I didn't have enough heat, it eventually cracked, and then as you can see there, the two pieces did break. So it kinda acted like a cut. It's all right. Um, I have a lot of experience drilling in titanium, uh, using a carbide end mills and drill bits, so I'm not super worried about drilling into this. So here's what we're left with. Um, I tried to drift the hole in this obviously and it cracked, but I think that's okay. Um, now, if there's any doubt as to whether or not this is titanium, let's go over to the bench grinder and I will prove to you that it is titanium. Okay, so I've got a piece, this is mild steel tubing, and here's the titanium pieces that I was just working with. Now the important thing to pay attention to here is the sparks. Titanium sparks white hot and it sparks 
abundantly. There's a lot of sparks that are gonna come off this material. So I'm disengaging my vacuum because I don't want those titanium sparks going back into the vacuum because they burn so hot. And I'm setting up my dust collection so it goes down into the water bucket. So we'll start with the steel and then we'll try the tie. So we get some sparks out of the steel. Nothing crazy, now let's try the titanium. So this is what we just made this little guy out of. All right, uh, a quick note on safety when it comes to working with titanium. This right here, this yellow fire extinguisher is a class D dry powder fire extinguisher. These are specifically designed for uh, use on high heat fires that come as a result of titanium or magnesium um, igniting. Now, if you're gonna work with titanium, you really need to have one of these. I have two in the shop um, for the titanium stuff that I do. They are not cheap, they're extremely expensive, but they are definitely cheaper than a new shop. So just something to think about if you're gonna work with titanium, look into getting one of these. I actually bought mine at an auction, so they weren't that bad. So keep your eyes out, class D fire extinguishers. With my rough profile forged out, um, I'm able to head over to the grinder and I'm using an 80 grit ceramic belt. And you can see here I'm adding water. I'm just trying to make sure that I suffocate any embers or anything that might be particularly hot and sort of douse things. Um, now water won't put out a titanium fire, but if the titanium chips and titanium dust that are collecting in that tube have water on them, they're that much less likely to ignite as a result of the rest of the sparks. That's really the concern is that a pile of titanium dust uh, is going to ignite and then it's gonna burn out of control. So I'm being a little mindful of my sparks here, I'm just making sure everything gets down into the bucket or at least um, gets doused with a little bit of water just to keep it cool. Now I'm not really using any edge guides, I'm not doing anything to uh, really make this thing precise. I didn't mark out the center of the edge. I'm just totally doing the whole thing freehand and by eye and just really feeling out the bevels that I'm grinding in on this, trying to keep it cool and uh, keep myself from burning my thumbs and really just grind this thing into an organic shape that just looks nice by eye um, without any real planning beforehand. Now once I have the general shape ground in, I like to switch to uh, what's called a soft platen. So I take off my belt and I just use some light spray adhesive and I spray some spray adhesive there on the platen and I take some of this heavy duty felt and I put it on there. Now I'm gonna switch to a J Flex 120 grit uh, grinding belt. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give me a little bit of a convex grinding surface that I can lay into and push into and get just a little bit of give, similar to a slack belt, but with a little more control. And with this, I'll be able to really nicely round everything over, chamfer the edges, um, give even the bevels that I ground in a little bit of softness and just make sure that they're nice and even. And I really like this step. I, I really use it on my knives a lot. It really helps me kind of clean up any errant mistakes that might be there. I decided to leave the hammer marks and more or less the, the scale marks from the forge in the blade itself. I didn't want to grind it all out, but I did want to clean it up. So I went over to the wire wheel and I just took any of those dark spots out using that wire wheel and sort of cleaned it up universally so it was all nice and shiny. I wanted to drill a little lanyard hole or a, a hook hole in the back of this thing, but since it's titanium and it's been heated up, it's probably too hard for me to drill with any of my drill bits. So I just decided to go right over to the bridge port and I put in a quarter inch carbide end mill and just use it as a drill to just sort of puncture through the bottom of that and then move the vise a little bit to make it sort of an oval hole. Um, carbide drills titanium extremely well. I'm running at about 1100 RPMs on my bridge port, which is exactly what that carbide end mill wants. You see those nice chips and strings coming off of it. And then I can just sort of move the vise over, cut a little oval, and I can start to deburr it. Oh, that was hot. Oh, man. Huh.
cool. Back over on my soft platen, I just sort of deburr the outsides of that, and then I grab a little deburring tool and run on the inside. With that done, the scalpels are essentially finished, and I head over to my 1x30 grinder to start my sharpening process. I go from an 800 grit silicon carbide belt to a 1200 grit silicon carbide belt, and then I switch over to a leather strop with some black and then some green compound. And this gives me basically a flawless mirrored edge that's incredibly sharp, even in this titanium. Now this titanium is going to hold an edge for light duty tasks. It's not gonna be like a chopper or a carving knife, but the titanium I have found will retain an edge strong enough for sort of craft purposes and to use basically as a scalpel. So talking about the weight of this titanium, this is a piece of eighth inch steel. It's approximately the same size and uh, it's about the same thickness. This turned out to be about an eighth of an inch thick. So the steel weighs about 40 grams. This little knife weighs 18 grams. So half the weight of the steel in the same size. That's how light titanium is. All right, that about does it for this project. Uh, this was fun. I had a good time messing with this. Um, forging titanium is interesting. It heated up super fast. It cooled down super fast. Um, I hate grinding it, but you know, it's actually holding a nice little edge. It's not like a, obviously it's not like a heavy utility edge. Um, the titanium is not something that I can harden without uh, doing what's called carbidizing it. I'm choosing not to. I'm basically just going to use this as like a little craft scalpel. I'll cut up paper with it uh, when I have to cut out templates and stuff like that. And it's just kind of a, a cool little thing to uh, keep around. And again, a little project that was kind of a fun experience to mess with. 3 8 solid 6AL4V titanium bar turned into this. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. I had a really good time making it. I really enjoy trying new projects and I've been really enjoying kind of getting involved with some sort of some sort of blacksmithing stuff and sort of learning as I go. So if you liked this and you want to see behind the scenes stuff, what I do in the shop on a daily basis, follow me on Instagram at make everything shop. I always post behind the scenes stuff on my story. Anytime I'm working on a project like this. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends. If you want to show it to others and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this, doing a lot more blacksmithing coming up. I'm really pushing things uh, this year in 2019 and thank you all the new subscribers that I've had. There's been a major influx in the last couple of weeks and I am almost at 50,000 and I will probably be doing a giveaway on my Instagram when I get there. So thanks again. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it and I hope to see you on the next video.